Okay, so this is kind of just a fun little um, supplemental lecture. Uh, it's not super formal or anything. I will make it um, an extra credit option. So you can respond to this lecture for some extra credit. But basically, I just thought it'd be fun to tell you a romantic story since Valentine's Day is this weekend um, at the time of this recording. This may be used in future semesters when it's not Valentine's Day. But anyway, Valentine's Day 2021, I thought it would be fun to tell you a little story. So special Valentine's Day content. Why? Because I love art history. We're all here to talk about art history. Um, historical gossip is kind of the best. It's super fun tea. Nobody gets hurt. They're all long dead. Um, art world romances are pretty rad and kind of intriguing and there's all the passions of the artists and all the things. So it's kind of a fun thing. So what I want to talk to you about today is the story of Raphael and La Fonorina. La Fonorina. Okay, so Raphael is an artist from the Renaissance. We have talked about Raphael. Here's his self-portrait. So we, you know the name Raphael for a couple of reasons. From our previous lectures and activities, you remember this painting in the, um, in the quarters of the Pope, right? This is philosophy, also known as the School of Athens by Raphael. We also did an exercise, and one of you is writing about uh, the Virgin of the Meadows, also by Raphael. So this is a familiar name. You also know him um, maybe before this class because he was one of the Ninja Turtles, right? Okay, so we know who Raphael is. We feel comfortable with, with who he is. So let's talk a little bit about um, why he is the subject of my Valentine's Day lecture. So in 1514, Raphael becomes engaged to a woman, and her name is Maria Bibiena. And she is um, kind of a high society lady. She has a lot of connections. Uh, she sort of fancies Raphael. He was, by all accounts, very uh, handsome and, and um, kind of a, a sought after guy. He's very talented. He's made a name for himself as an artist. So he's a very eligible bachelor type. Um, and one of the things about Maria is her uncle is a cardinal. So a cardinal is someone um, kind of higher up in the power structure of the Vatican, of the Catholic Church, which as you know from our lectures, they're one of the big patrons of the arts, particularly uh, in the case of our friend Raphael, right? So he's, he's very uh, connected in with the Vatican. So Maria's uncle is Cardinal Medici Bibiena. Now, his name has another name in there that sounds significant, right? The Medicis, they're also big patrons of the arts. So we have this guy who's very well connected, who's a patron of Raphael, and is also by all accounts kind of his friend. They're kind of friendly with each other, so they have a professional relationship and they know each other. And so the Cardinal persuades Raphael that this would be a good idea, that he should marry um, Maria, the Cardinal's niece, that she's a, a well-placed woman in society, that this would be beneficial, that she's this beautiful maiden and she would be a good wife. And he kind of like nudges pretty hard. He, he really sets up this marriage and persuades Raphael to marry her. And Raphael is by all accounts quite reluctant. He's not excited about marrying Maria but um, he has a really good relationship with his cardinal and he doesn't want to screw that up, so he finally kind of agrees, okay? So one of the things that we know backs up historically his lack of enthusiasm is that they're engaged officially in 1514 and they, they do not get married. He puts off the marriage over and over and over again. Long engagements weren't so much of a thing back then, um, so it's, it's odd. They're engaged and then they just don't get married um, and then they both die <laughs> without marrying each other. So here's a, um, a portrait, uh, not a portrait because it wasn't done of the actual people, but here's a historical painting of this betrothal. So this is by Jean-Auguste uh, Dominique Angre. We're going to talk about him a lot today. We talk about him in our module about neoclassicism and romanticism um, a little later. Uh, in the semester, so you'll you'll get to know more about this artist later, but we're going to talk about him a little bit to, today too, so, so kind of jump in the gun a little bit talking about him. But this is such a significant story that he actually does this painting of the betrothal of Raphael to the niece of Cardinal Bibiana, who is Maria Bibiana. So they are betrothed, we know that this is a thing that happened. But legend has it, he loved another. Actually, um, legend, he, he had a reputation of being kind of a ladies' man, so he loved 
a lot of women is kind of the reputation that Raphael had. But for our purposes, he truly loved another. And there's some historical clues that back this up, that he actually did have a great true love and, and a romance with a different woman, a woman that was not his fiancee, Maria. And that woman, we think, is this woman. So this is a painting by Raphael, and it is called La Donna Velletta, which means the woman with the veil. And it is painted in 1516. And there are a lot of things that indicate that the woman who was the model for this image was named Margarita Lutti. And Margarita Lutti um, is the daughter of a baker. Not a banker, a baker, like someone who bakes bread and things. And um, so the niece of a cardinal is much um, higher positioned in society at the time than the daughter of a baker, right? So this is a time when, when your, your, your class was really um, relevant and, and was preventative in some cases for people to be with the people that they loved. So we believe that that is who the woman in this painting of his, Woman with a Veil, is. And there's, um, there's a couple of reasons that, that people think that. This is another painting by Raphael, and this is the main subject um, of our, our discussion today. And this painting is called La Fornarina. Now, La Fornarina is an Italian word, and it means the female baker. It also sometimes is interpreted as meaning the daughter of the baker. So we know this woman, Margarita Lutti, was the daughter of a baker and was probably a baker herself. She probably also worked um, in, his, in her uh, father's bakery. And here's this very famous um, and kind of controversial painting by Raphael of La Fornarina, the baker, the female baker. Um, it's controversial because at this time, as you recall from our lectures in the Renaissance, nudes were generally not depicted as regular people, right? They would be relabeled as Venus or, or something that, that made the nudity okay. So having a, nu a mostly nude portrait of a woman that is identified as just kind of a regular woman, a baker, is very strange at this time and, and would have been odd, okay? So let's look at some details and, and kind of find out some more information about this painting. This is also the last painting he was working on when he died. He didn't actually finish it. His students finished it. So let's look at a couple things. We'll compare some, some um, kind of close-ups between uh, this painting and the previous painting I showed you. So this pearl that is in her hair attached to kind of her, her headdress uh, in both of these is kind of a similar looking jewel. And we think that this is a clue. Art historians kind of think this is a clue because the Latin word for pearl is Margarita. And the woman who we think is depicted in both of these images is Margarita Lutti, right? So we think that the pearl being prominent in, in, in her, fastened to her hair in both of these is kind of alluding to the fact that this is a portrait of Margarita who was Raphael's mistress and model, okay? So let's look at some other interesting things about this painting. So we look at this painting of uh, La Foranina. Uh, Raphael's signature in the painting is placed on this band that is around her left arm. That's kind of weird, right? We usually see the signature at the bottom or sometimes it's sort of hidden in the background maybe, but having it uh, kind of put almost like a label on her arm, right? It seems like it's kind of an identification piece here is a little strange. Um, there's significance to that placement. So the left arm is the arm that has the vein that connects to the heart. So the things bestowed on the left arm um, in a painting of one's love interest can be read as sort of symbolizing love and significance and intimacy. Um, and the fact that he is signing the painting and it kind of signing her it's sort of a way of identifying like, this is my love. I put my name on her left arm. Um, and it, let's, let's look at a little bit of other things about the placement of, of hands and things in here. So her right hand in the image is lightly touching her heart, right? So her left arm is, this is Raphael, this is Raphael's love. Her right hand is lightly over her heart and she's kind of staring with this sort of soft smiling a little bit coy kind of expression toward the viewer 
but when she was sitting for the paint, painting, the person she would be staring at with her hand over her heart would have been Raphael. So he's saying, this is my love, and she's kind of saying it back to him with this gesture. This is my love, I love you as well, with this sort of tender gesture. Um, another thing that's interesting is a few years ago, um, I forget exactly what year it was in the 2000s, but um, an Italian art historian, whose name I always forget, but I wrote it down, Maurizio Barnadelli Caruso is an Italian art historian, and this painting is um, taken for restoration, basically. So this happens often. Paintings have to be cleaned and conserved and restored. So this art historian um, is looking, is working with this conservation team, and um, they discover something really interesting. So when they do an x-ray of the image, so that's a common thing in modern conservation is x-raying the images to try and see details of previous versions of the paintings. And this procedure has revealed some really interesting things about some paintings in the past. So they x-ray this, and one of the things that they notice is that um, some things have been painted out of the background. So the background on this painting, when we look at it, is just kind of uh, dark. It's almost black. It's this really dark green, and there's some foliage, but it's been really painted out so we can't tell the details. Well, when they x-ray it, they can really clearly see the kinds of plants that were in the background originally, and those plants are quince and myrtle. And quince and myrtle have really specific meanings. You know from um, my lectures in the Renaissance and the Baroque that things aren't really accidental. It, any flower, any color, any kind of thing in there generally has some kind of meaning. And these two plants mean fidelity and fertility, and they are very common plants painted in marriage portraits. So any Italian at the time seeing this portrait with quince and myrtle in the background would think that this was a marriage portrait. This was a portrait of a woman who had just been married or was about to be married or was betrothed that is made for her betrothed, for her person that she loves. In this case, we think that the person is Raphael. So a lot of um, this sort of reveals and causes sort of a buzz that people are like, you know, maybe there's some truth to this myth about this great romance. Perhaps she was actually his secret love, his, his true love, and that's why he never married the Cardinal's niece, Maria. And then uh, as they're x-raying and as they're looking closely and cleaning the painting, um, they discover something else. Bling bling, what is on the third finger of her left hand? It is a wedding ring. So um, with this information, uh, Caruz, the art historian who's working with the conservation team, is even more convinced that this woman, uh, Margarita Luti, was not just one of Raphael's lovers, which he purportedly had quite a few lovers, this was perhaps his secret wife. So putting these this information and these details together, people are like, oh, maybe this was more than just the sort of uh, myth that had been created about the two of them. So maybe this actually substantiates this historic love story that has come down through the centuries. So um, between these two is this sort of romance that has been uh, the subject of a lot of works throughout history in visual art and in other forms of art. And um, before this discovery of the ring and the myrtle in the background that kind of more substantiate this a little bit, people thought it was something that was just sort of blown out of proportion. So there's a book called Lives of the Artists, The Lives, which is by a man named Vasari. And he was kind of our first art historian, but more like an art um, biographer, an artist biographer. So he's a contemporary of Raphael and all these guys. And in his book, The Lives, when he writes about Raphael, he writes that his model and muse was his one true love. And so from this little line, and he doesn't say her name, but from this line, Infasari's Lives kind of starts this big... Um, epic romantic rumor, okay? And this rumor becomes the fascination of many uh, creative types throughout the centuries. So I'm going to list a couple of things that are not um, visual arts, but are other creative interests that were piqued by this. Uh, so we have in uh, Camoli's 1790 novel, it was kind of biography, but it was like a little bit twisted to be a little bit more fantastical. Um, 
it's a it's called the life of Raphael and so this author Camoli writes it in 1790 and in that he blames Margarita Lutti he says not only is she his lover and his true his true love but she's depicted as this um kind of uh insatiable lusty woman and he blames her for Raphael's death and he blames her for Raphael's death in kind of an odd way he basically says that Raphael died young because he had so much sex that he just expired and so in this book uh, in 1790 life of Raphael uh, the author implies doesn't really imply just kind of straight out says that she basically um, Margarita Lutti was his love and his lover but she was uh, insatiable and she sexed him to death, essentially. So that's kind of an interesting interpretation. Uh, Balzac features her in his uh, Splendors and Miseries of the Courtesans, and she is portrayed as the example of the femme fatale. So this idea of this archetype of a seductive woman that turns out to be nefarious kind of gets modeled after this, this baker who was probably not evil. <laughs> she just sort of gets twisted into this caricature. Uh, Joseph Marie, in 1854, he writes a novel about the two of them that is called Raphael et la Fonarine. So he's French, so it's the Fonarine is the um, French version of the word. So he writes a whole novel that's that's like a romance novel in 1854 about their lurid affair and that they were in love and that they were secretly married and all of this. Um, Baudelaire mentions her when he's describing the affections of a courtesan. Um, Lord Byron styled his Venetian mistress Margarita Cogni after her in uh, some of his uh, poetry. Um, Caroline uh, Norton wrote a sonnet in which Raphael tells the Pope that she is his eyes, that Margarita Lutti is his eyes, and how he is able to see the world with his muse. Um, Nabokov writes a... Um, he writes about her affection, about the affection between Raphael uh, and um, uh, Margarita Lutti. He writes about this as being, kind of creating this um, competition between Raphael and Sebastiano del Piombo, who's also a, a painter of the time. He does what we call the portrait of a lady, and it's thought that that is the same model, that, that is the same woman. And so Nabokov writes about this big feud they have, that they were feuding for her affections. Um, Enrico Guzzoni's uh, 1944 film uh, La Fonarina is about the couple, it's about these two, and in it, a kind of weird side fact, so 1944, this is in, during World War II, this is an Italian filmmaker, and the lead role of uh, Fonarina, or Margarita Lutti, is played by Laida Barova. Laida Barova was Goebbels' mistress, Goebbels the... Um, evil, horrible Nazi leader. So that's kind of a weird little side note. Um, in Bera Weissach's 1979 film, Les Héroines du Mal, she is portrayed as a femme fatale who poisons Raphael. So in this one, she's also blamed for Raphael's death in this movie. Um, in 1879, Carl Zeller um, premieres this opera that's kind of a funny opera. It's like a comedic opera. And it's about her, and it's called Die Fonarina. Uh, Arinsky's 1894 opera, Raphael, which is about the life of Raphael, um, features a passionate duet between Raphael and Margarita Lutti. Um, and there's even later uh, in the 20th century a species of rose that is cultivated that is named La Fonarina after this woman. So she becomes the subject of a lot of this kind of speculative, uh, mostly fiction, um, in films and in poetry and in sonnets and in novels and even in this cultivating of roses. So this is a, um, a story that piques the interest of lots of people over the centuries. But what I want to talk about more is looking at um, her, the portrayal of her and Raphael by other painters and, and other artists. So we have this piece from 1830 in the 19th century is when is really, this is like all the rage. It's a very common story, a very common narrative to be portrayed in um, paintings. So this is by uh, Filippo Bigoli. Um, and this is showing when they first meet. So when Raphael first sees her and there's some romanticizing written about this that 
he was searching for his muse, he was stuck doing this painting of Psyche and he couldn't get the right muse so he couldn't get the painting done and then he sees the baker's daughter walking by and, and he is inspired and he's able to make the best art of his life because he has found his muse. So this is an image of that meeting and um, this is something that then captivates the art world particularly in the 1900s. We have um, etchings, we have lithographs, we have paintings. So this is uh, one by Samuel William Reynolds Jr. Just Raphael and La Fornarina. Um, we have a German painter in the 19th century, which this is not attributed, we don't know which painter this is, uh, who's portraying this, again, him kind of coming across her in, uh, in this case, in a meadow, sort of like she's bathing. Um, we have lots of depictions of uh, him painting her, so in some of these he is uh, undressing her for the first time, and in some of them he is painting her when she's laying in the bed that they have perhaps just, you know, made love in. Um, we also see uh, renditions that are a little bit more tender, where they're clearly kind of in love and have these sort of more romantic type gestures, and a lot of times it is connected, she is connected in some way to his artistry because she was described as his muse, so in a lot of these um, he's drawing or painting, or in uh, the image by Gandolfi on the right, he's holding his palette and his brushes, and she's just leaning against him with his painting in the background. Um, and again, these are just more of her kind of being his inspiration as well as his lover shown in the studio with him. So we get a lot of these, but um, there's a, a couple of artists that get fascinated by this that are that are sort of big time artists that I, I want to just spend a little time talking about in particular. So this is a particular fascination of a very famous artist who we talk about quite a bit when we talk uh, in our module on neoclassicism and romanticism, and that is uh, Jean-Auguste Dominique Angre. So we talk about him quite a lot. Here uh, he has, we have lots of drawings sketchbooks, lots of studies where he's just drawing her over and over, and he's drawing her looking at Raphael's um, painting of La Fonarina is kind of where he is drawing this image of her from, but he does lots of studies. He looks at her um, quite closely. He does several um, paintings of them. I think he does in total maybe four paintings on this subject. So here are a couple of them where you can see he's just sort of tweaking and changing it a little bit. And then this is his most famous depiction. So this one is done between 1813 and 1814 and it is Raphael and the Fonorinina. So this is um, her and you can see she has the same kind of headdress with the little jewel and the pearl attached to her headdress that we see in his original painting that sort of sparked all this speculation and interest between them. You can see that on his easel, that is the painting that he is working on with her mostly nude chest, her hand resting on her, her heart. And there, he is looking at it and she is looking at the viewer. And so she's kind of looking at the viewer saying, this is my love, this is my husband, this is my Raphael, this is his talent, I am the inspiration. But she's just sort of unabashedly looking for it at us. And you can see in the style here that neoclassical kind of line that we get when we see uh, Angre. So you can see um, this is fairly typical of his work, but it's interesting because it's a historical painting, but it's a historical painting that is particular to another artist. This is an artist that was really important to Angre. He sort of saw himself as the embodiment of, uh, the re-embodiment of Raphael. He really admired Raphael. He was kind of a hero of his. So his fixation on this love story makes sense in that context. But it's kind of a neat thing. I think his uh, depiction is, is quite lovely. Uh, there's a lot of nice, rich details in here. Um, so Angre is what we call a heavy hitter in terms of his art historical fame and significance. Um, so he's like, he's a big name in art history. He's a, if you go to the Louvre, you see a lot of Angre. He, he's a very important artist. But the next guy who kind of gets bit by the Raphael and uh, Fonarina bug is infamous and is arguably the most famous name in art history of all time, and that is Pablo Picasso. So uh, continuing into the 20th century, 
this becomes, this, this fascination does not go away in art circles. And uh, Picasso um, does this, in, this whole series of etchings about these two. And these are a little lewd, they're a little graphic. If you know anything about Picasso's etchings, he, was, uh, he did not shy away from things being um, very sexually explicit. So um, Picasso gets really fascinated in this, and he's not just fascinated in the relationship between Raphael and his muse, uh, Margarita Luti, he's also fascinated by how Angre was interested in them. So um, he does this entire series of etchings, and he's just sort of imagining them in all these lewd positions. But it's interesting because these are 1968, so this is relatively recent. Um, and when we think back to the original, let's just go back all the way to the original painting. So this is done in, you know, 1518. So we're looking at something that has spanned uh, centuries and fascinated artists for a long time. So up at through 1968, here are some more of the images from the series that Picasso did. Um, and it's, it's just kind of a fun... It's a fun story from the art world. So were they really secretly married? We don't know. Were they really truly in love? Maybe. Were they lovers? Perhaps. Again, we don't know the concrete things here, but there's a lot of little interesting um, sort of clues, and it's like you get to sort of be a detective, um, uh, that have come forth that suggest that they were lovers and maybe they were more than just lovers. They were perhaps um, betrothed or secretly married. And again, this had to be a secret because he was engaged to someone else. So it's an interesting story. Um, so uh, Raphael dies, he dies quite young. So after he dies, what happens to Margarita Luti? What happens to uh, La Forarina? Um, she is described as a widow at that time, which is another reason that um, think perhaps they were married um, is because she is described as a widow and it is said that the widow Luti uh, goes off to a nunnery. So she goes um, and stays in a nunnery in her grief for four months after the death of Raphael and after that there's not uh, really any historic documentation about her, at least not that's widely known, at least not that I know. So um, again that kind of final little chapter seems to indicate that they were in fact a romantic couple. So there is that. Here are a couple more Picassos. Again, these are pretty these are pretty lurid, <laughs> these etchings by Picasso. And then that is your little bonus lecture for Valentine's Day, the love story of Raphael and Margarita. So happy Valentine's Day. I hope you have a great weekend.